today we're going to start seeds and seed flats. We're going to show you how to do it. It's very, very simple. It's an older method, but it works. It's very effective so that we can start our seeds to make, to make transplants for around the first week of June. I already have my potting soil already made up in the wheelbarrow. It's a mixture of potting soil and compost. So at this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this pot, six inch pot, and I'm going to fill my seed flat and we'll sort. Now I'm going to transfer it to the table. All right, now what we have to do is we have to tamp down the soil and make rows so that we can plant our seed. Now, what I have is this really high-tech implement here, which is basically a piece of wood cut slightly smaller than the width of the seed flat. And what I do is I take it and I just kind of tamp down the soil like this. Okay. And the next thing I do, probably about an inch to an inch and a half apart, I make rows using my piece of wood. And I just kind of dig into the soil, like so. We continue making our rows. And one last one. There. And now we're going to sow uh, a, a new heirloom variety that's never been seen by the public before called Hannah. It's a German pink red tomato uh, heirloom. And we're going to start by sowing in these rows that I have cut into the seed flat at this time. So in the, in the container that it's in, we're just going to gently tap the seeds in? into the row. And if they do pop out, you can just push them in with your finger a little bit like that. And we and continue sowing. You're doing a really good job, Colin. That's the way I want it. And it's okay if there's a, there's a few close together. It's not going to hurt it at all. In fact, that's actually one of the advantages of using a seed flat is that when the roots of each plant are together, they seem to help each other. There's what they call, the word is symbiosis. Now we're going to gather the soil together to cover the seed so that we can water in the flats and put them on the germination chamber. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just gathering the soil together so that the, the seed is down about a quarter of an inch below the soil surface. It's real fast. It's real easy. Doesn't take long to do. This is a cell flat. We're going to use this this time instead of the soil, soil flat. Um, this way we can sow in, uh, seed on top of the soil on each individual cell, making it easier for transplant at the proper time. Very good, Colin. Do the whole flat like that. Exact that, just like that. Perfect. All right. Thank you, Colin. We're going to make shallow depressions in each cell now so that we can sow the seed in each cell. And we, that, that we do that to make a reservoir for the seed to make sure that they're planted deep enough and also that when we water them, the seed will not get washed out. Our goal is to plant probably two or three seeds per cell. And that's another advantage of using a cell flat. It also conserves on seeds. You don't use as many seeds. So there's some advantages. And some people already draw the conclusion that this is a better method. That's up to your discretion. We're going to sow right now these two varieties of tomatoes in this 50 cell flat, 25 of each variety. Black brandy wine on my left and tomato delicious on my right. Two excellent varieties. In fact, uh, the tomato delicious held the world record up until this past year. So 
7 pound, 12 ounce tomato. It's wise to uh, make your labels ahead of time uh, so that you know, delineate in your seed flats or soil flats where certain varieties are. And I like to use a pencil because a pencil does not uh, degrade with sunlight or doesn't get washed away or anything like that because of the graphite in the pencil. So at this time I'm going to put the date, which today is uh, 4, 4, and then the variety, which is brandy wine, purple, Again, the date on the other one, four, four, and the variety is delicious. And I'll place them where they need to go, in there, one, two, three, four, five, and there. Now we're going to go ahead and plant seed here of the first variety, which is black brandy wine. I'm going to pour the seed into my hand here help out Mr. Cohen. Okay. Be very careful. I'm going to do the first couple. Try and put like one or two. That's it. See? Two. Two. There's only one there, so we'll put another one. All right. Go ahead and try. Can I do two? Yep. Do two at a time. Two seeds. Okay. One. Doing a good job. Put two in each one. Yep. Another way to cover seed in a, in a flat or a cell flat is to use a, a material called vermiculite. And it's made from mica that's heated up and it makes the, um, the, the mineral shear into flakes. And this is a, what, a real, what they call a fine grade. It allows light to penetrate and yet it covers at the same time and can keep the soil moist. So it's a really great thing to use, and you can just cover really quick and just go like this with your hand, a little bit out of each hole. Can I do it? Yep, can? you sure can. Can I do it in? Yep, boy, well, in whatever hole you want. I need some more. Now we're going to go ahead and water in the seed flats and the cell flats, uh, and that's the next to the last step. After that, we place it in either a greenhouse, a cold frame a hoop house, something like that, to get enough warmth and to also to get enough sunlight to make the seeds germinate and to continue to grow. And that weighs 16 pounds. We're going to put these seed flats under the lights and on uh, thermostatically controlled heat mats, electric heat mats, so that we can get them up and going and so that we can have them ready for transplant by the first week of June. If you don't have access to a setup like I have here, you could put these in a greenhouse or a hoop house or even a cold frame so that you could get them up and going.